how do we see the good in stuff that is not that is not inherently good at, at face value? I was driving my daughter to, to, to kindergarten one day and it was cloudy outside. And I was just kind of in a mood that morning, you know, where I was like, man, cloudy again. And McKinley in her infinite wisdom as a four-year-old looked out the window and said, yeah, daddy, but it's a nice day for clouds. And I said, McKinley, what did you say? And she goes, daddy, it's a nice day for clouds. Look at them, they're beautiful. I said, oh my gosh. So in this moment, where I'm seeing all of the bad that could be, and I'm seeing these clouds as a bad thing, my daughter's looking out with, with whimsy in her eyes, thinking, man, those clouds are beautiful. It's a really, really nice day for clouds today. So she looked for the, for the bright side in that situation where I was looking for the negative. And for every negative, y'all, there's a positive. It doesn't matter what you're going through right now. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Carrot Cast. Now, the Carrot Cast, we're usually diving in doing interviews with amazing real estate investors, amazing real estate agents. Now, in these episodes, every Thursday, they're the Trevor Truck Talks, where you get to hear behind the scenes of the mindset shifts I'm going through as a CEO of one of the fastest growing companies in America and the mindset shifts you can take to run your business and win back your freedom as well. Let's dive into this episode. And coming at you guys from the late, late night edition of the Carrot Cast, Trevor Truck Style. It's 3.45 a.m. and I'm recording a podcast. And you're probably wondering, why the heck are you recording a podcast at 3.45? Well, um, we, had a, we had a big incident downtown uh, at one of our buildings. I'll tell you about it here in a second. Police cars, everything. Got a call in the middle of the night. And what I want to talk about is something taking all the way back to about 2012. Um, and I wrote an article on this topic. I'm going to call it a great day for clouds. And, and it was inspired by my oldest daughter, who's 11 now, but she was a couple years old at that time. And, and it's really about seeing the silver lining in things. Uh, it's about seeing the joy through trials. It's about, it's about trying to find the good meaning, the good thing behind anything that goes wrong or anything that's bad. So I got a phone call uh, at 1.35 this morning from a local Roseburg number. Uh, I never get phone calls from anyone in Roseburg at that at that time of night. So I answered the call, I usually never answer phone calls. And it was my neighbor uh, who's a police officer in town named Brian. So thank you, Officer Odell. And he called me up and he said, hey Trevor, I know uh, you own buildings downtown and one of your buildings got ran into by a car. Uh, actually it wasn't a car, it's a giant Dodge Ram pickup that rammed into the center front of our historical downtown building that we just started renovating about a month ago. And we're, we've already put a really good amount of money into this renovation. Contractors are literally, they've been in there for a month. They're gonna be in there for probably another two months maybe. And then we're gonna move them down to the next building that we bought and build that apartment. And we're just gonna keep on beautifying downtown, one building at a time and one small business at a time. And so I get down there and, he, and he's, he, he calls me and he says, you know, your windows are broken out, part of your brick, like this beautiful brick that's been there for decades and decades. The main entryway for the businesses, it's a shared space where there's three storefronts right now, the middle storefront we're renovating, but that's where, that's the only entrance of the building. So the other two stores, they're both kind of <clears throat> boutiques and gift shops The people have to enter through this middle space. And that entire middle space, a lady crashed through tonight. Uh, she was driving downtown and she wasn't impaired. The officer said we for sure thought she had been drunk, but she wasn't. She just would, got distracted by her phone and she skipped the curb, took out a light pole downtown, took out one of our new parking <laughs> parking posts because uh, they're going to start clamping down on parking and rammed straight into the glass display cases. The entire front of the building shattered all of the glass chunked down complete sections of the brick. And I got up this morning, my first initial thought was like, oh my gosh, why? It was why, right? And that's probably our first reaction usually of any anytime anything bad happens to us uh, is why did this happen to me? Why, why can't things be easier, okay? Why is it that this bad thing decided to come to me instead of someone else? I've had all these trials, right? And so I get down there and immediately as I'm driving down there, I go, okay, so first of all, I don't care about the building. That stuff can be replaced. Insurance will step in. 
Uh, what I care about is this gal who I don't know, is she okay? Okay, so I flipped my mindset from why me to is, is that person okay? Thinking about the other person, thinking about the greater good outside of myself. But that took a little bit. It wasn't natural. Like I had to, I had to make the, the switch as I was going in. I was like, how can I change this into a situation that is positive? And how can I, how can I change this into a situation where it's not a harm on me, but it's actually an opportunity to help others? Okay, so I get down there. The gal was already gone, but I talked to the police officers, amazing guys. They helped clean up the mess. They were there for over an hour with me. The other tenant, uh, the tenant of that store came down right away. She was amazingly positive. And there's people, I've had other tenants, tenants in commercial buildings that they would have been the most negative ever. They would have been asking, why did this lady do this? Oh my gosh, I just worked so hard to set up this, this new display case for the retail, which is true. They literally yesterday finished, they spent all this time the entire afternoon doing this entire display case in the front of the store and it got crashed in tonight less than 24 hours after they spent half an afternoon to to craft this amazing display case for the entrance of their store um what, both of the stores are new small businesses okay they're one of them is about a year and a half to two years old one of them is literally brand new less than a year old they're small businesses they could have had every reason in the world to think of why is the sky is falling but all of us are like i hope the gal is okay hope she's okay and then we started looking at it and said okay Let's look, let's look at this from a, a silver lining. And I'm going to bring in something my daughter said when she was two years old. It hit me so hard. I wrote an article about it in the local newspaper. And I ended up having people send me emails. They were posting this article in the back of their, in their stores for their employees to see. And in the lesson here that's relearned is how do we see the good in stuff that is not, that is not inherently good at, at face value? When I was driving my daughter to, to, to kindergarten one day. Maybe she was three or four years old. So I was driving my daughter to kindergarten one day back, you know, way back in the years and it was cloudy outside. And I was just kind of in a mood that morning, you know, where I was like, man, I, I was, I was in, in a mood a bit. And we were driving on the way to work and it was a little bit, it was a lot cloudy, completely cloudy. And I said, man, it's cloudy again, which it kind of gets that way in Oregon, right? It gets cloudy for a lot of days during the winter sometimes. And so I said, oh, it's cloudy again. And McKinley in her infinite wisdom as a four-year-old looked out the window and said, yeah, daddy, but it's a nice day for clouds. And I said, McKinley, what did you say? And she goes, daddy, it's a nice day for clouds. Look at them. They're beautiful. I said, oh my gosh. So in this moment where I'm seeing all of the bad that could be, and I'm seeing these clouds as a bad thing, my daughter's looking out with, with whimsy in her eyes, thinking, man, those clouds are beautiful. It's a really, really nice day for clouds today. So she looked for the, for the bright side in that situation where I was looking for the negative. And for every negative, y'all, there's a positive. It doesn't matter what you're going through right now. Okay, we, we had, we, we've had some amazingly hard trials. I've talked about them here in the podcast. You know, Adrian, my good friend and, and just amazing ambassador here, Karen, passed away in October. That's not something we want, right? But is there silver linings in that? There, there are, and there's some silver linings already happening. Right? I'd much rather have him here. I'd, I would have much rather have had not got the call at 1.30 in the morning uh, to come down and that our, our building that we're renovating, we just started renovating and, our, and the stores that these gals are working so hard on in small businesses are crashed in by a person who was a little bit careless tonight. I didn't want that, right? But I want to challenge you guys tonight as I'm, as I'm nearing home is <clears throat> what are you looking at right now in your life as a negative that, that you're letting it drag you down? You know, it could be a situation with your spouse where you had an argument or it's a, it's a, it's a little habit that he or she has that annoys you. Um, or maybe it's something with your business where you lost a deal and you're like, man, why did I lose that deal? Or, or another competitor, um, you know, swindled you out of a deal or you actually got cheated out of, out of profits on a deal. That's happened to all of us before. Or it could have been like my, like my oldest daughter again, uh, about a month ago, she broke her knee, Right. And she had a big surgery and this giant scar, about a four inch scar over the top of her kneecap because they had to completely splay her knee open to, to do the surgery, right? It's like, how do, you look, how do you look at the positives in these when we don't want to? And I want you to kind of think about that. One of those things this week or today or you know, this morning or tonight or whenever it is that you're listening to this, I want you to think about something that you're letting drag you down right now. Think about that thing right now. Like I said, what, what is the situation? Internalize that. What is that thing 
that you're going, man, I wish this didn't happen to me. Man, I wish I wasn't, I wish this wasn't my circumstance. And I'll give you a personal example I've talked about in the podcast before. So when I was growing up, um, so I'm, I'm about five foot six and not a tall guy. Um, you know, the, the internet makes things bigger. <laughs> I'm not a tall guy, five foot six. And uh, my brothers and my dad are all six foot tall. And growing up, um, you know, I, there, there were moments where I'm like, man, why am I the short one, right? And I was born with a syndrome that's a skeletal syndrome. And this skeletal syndrome um, affects height. So it says for, for boys, you're about six inches shorter than your boy siblings. And for girls, about three inches shorter than your girl siblings. Uh, it affects your teeth. And so I ended up having dozens of extra teeth that, that didn't pop through. But I had two surgeries when I was younger, when I was 12 and when I was 14. I had 32 teeth pulled in total, like full on surgeries, guys where they had to go in and take out dozens of teeth that were in my gums that were not even supposed to be there. They pulled some that would not come out yet. Um, and in my formative years, if you can imagine this, you know, when I'm, when I'm 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, even into 18, 19 years old, the dentists and orthodontists are working on trying to get me teeth. Uh, there were years in high school where I had missing teeth in the front and I had these weird braces in. And um, I didn't want to talk a lot. I didn't want to really... You know, I, 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 do, I wasn't down. I was never bullied, thankfully. Um, but I just really didn't have the confidence to speak and to talk, okay? And so as soon as I got my teeth fixed, and, um, and there's some fake ones in there, and most, you know, most of them are real, thank God, um, I started to step out of that and say, what do I need to do to use this for good? How can I use those years when I maybe bottled up my voice a bit and I, and I had lack of confidence? How can I use those years to actually propel me forward to be the best person I can possibly be. You know, how can I use this situation that I didn't ask for, that I didn't want uh, into a positive to light up the world? And so that's one of the things that's motivated me, y'all, is actually the syndrome that I was born with that affects my joints, it affect, affected my teeth, and thank God that things are good there. Um, you know, I'm shorter than most people, and you know what? My oldest daughter, McKinley, uh, has that syndrome, and that might have contributed to her knee breaking the way that it did. And my boy, Colton, has the syndrome and he's nine years old and hasn't lost a tooth yet. And so we look at these situations and we can think about all the things that, that are wrong with us and why did this happen to me? But there's always people worse off. And I want to encourage you guys to be that lighthouse for people. I want to encourage you guys to be that lighthouse and not the person who drags people down. Don't be... Um, you know, don't be dead weight on people. Don't be a crab uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a pail. If you guys have ever heard that saying that when you have a bunch of crabs in a pail, um, if there's one crab that's trying to climb out, the other crabs below it grab the crab. It, they pinch the crab's legs and try to pull it back in. And don't be the ones in the bucket trying to pull people down. Be the one out of the bucket trying to elevate and pull people up. Okay, guys? So I appreciate you all. Um, it's a great day for clouds, y'all. I'm just now getting home. I'm going to go get back in bed with my family, spend time with my, my, um, my family. Hopefully he's asleep still, but get back in bed with my family. And I'm um, going to wake up tomorrow. Uh, it's a new day. That's a new day to, to now reimagine and redream what the front of that building is going to look like. And you know what, guys? Here's something cool. We were already going to renovate the entire front of that building and we were going to tear down the awnings and, and we were going to you know, get rid of all that glass and potentially that brick. And you know what? Now the insurance company might get to pay for some of it. So silver lining. Now I didn't ask for it once again. I'd much rather not have that be the situation. Um, but you know what? Some silver linings here, guys. Okay. It's a great day for clouds. Every single day is a great day for clouds. And I want to see you step into that mindset.